and in the case of this next magician, it might be a little more of a grudge match. Take a look. I have to say I'm really honored to be the first magician to be invited back for the third time. For the first time I did the trick called Unshuffle. It kind of uh, blew our minds. Not only did the trick fool Penn and Teller. You fooled us. Can you see that? <laughs> but based on video views and so on, it did fool a lot of the magicians too. The second time, the cups and balls. Thank you. I thought I was going to fool them. The only problem was uh, they knew that trick a little too well. It's now a tie. You get us last time, we get you this time. <laughs> Season five, kick our ass. <laughs> The thing I like most about coming on Fool Us is it pushes me to take my magic to the next level. So essentially, they've given me a gift each time. I have new routines thanks to being on the show, and this time I have a gift for them. said, Paul, season five, kick our butts. I'm going to give it my best shot. Okay. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. Now, I asked the producers to choose five totally random people from the audience to join me, and I want to thank you for coming up and helping me out. I'm not going to ask your names, because your names are going to determine the outcome of this trick. But first, a little story. In the early 70s, there was a study done in Las Vegas about winners and losers. They studied people that won big jackpots and people that went home totally broke. And there was a fascinating statistic in this study that said for some strange reason, all of the winners in the study had an even number of letters in their name. And all of the losers in the study had an odd number of letters in their name. It became known in the gambling industry as the lucky study. Now the question is, could your names determine your luck? Let's find out right now. I have a pack of cards right here, 52, oh, 54. I have the jokers in the deck, but we won't use the jokers. And I'd like everyone to do me a favor, come forward and hold your hand out like that and you're gonna put your finger on the back of one card. So all five, come back forward, just hold your hand out like that. Put your finger on one card, okay, perfect. Now slide those cards out, okay, slide them out. Take them back to your seat. Now, I'm going to have all of you look at your card just like this. Okay? Got it? Okay. And now I'm going to turn my back. And when I turn my back, I'm going to have you flip the card out to the audience just like that. Okay? Now, go ahead. You can turn it out to the audience. All right? And look at it. Now, everyone in the audience, remember one person and their card. Okay? Now, flip the card back around towards yourself. And we will now be ready to go. Now, we're going to place those five cards back in the deck one at a time, all right? First card right over here. Now, normally a magician has to find one card, but, well, I have to full pen and teller, so I'm going to do five. Now, would you place yours here? And let's get back to the story. Now, has anyone ever heard of the name Thomas Preston? Probably not. Thomas Preston was a gambler in the early 70s, but he never really won much of anything. He read about the lucky study, and he decided to change his name because when he added up the number of letters in his name, he discovered he had 13 letters in his name, a very unlucky number for a gambler. So Thomas Preston changed his name to Amarillo Slim. Oh, this is true. You can Google it. And once he changed his name to Amarillo Slim, he actually became very lucky because Amarillo Slim had 12 letters in the name. And he went on to win four world championships of poker. The last one with a royal straight flush in spades. Not something you see normally in Las Vegas. Now, the question is, did changing his name change his luck? We're gonna see right now with these five new friends I have here at the table. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to add up the number of letters in your first and last name together, okay? Now, you can use your fingers to do this, to be sure. Yeah, by all means. Now, I'm going to take and start over here. And I'd like to know how many letters in your first and last name together. There's 15. 15. Oh, 15. Wow. We might be down to first names only here. <laughs> okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You said 15? 
15. How many of yours? Eight. Eight? And uh, that's not your card by any chance, is it? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. How many in yours? Fourteen. Fourteen. First names only. Go with two. <laughs> Figure out how many letters in your first name. Fourteen, that's not your card? No. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. You said? Fourteen. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. How many in your first name? Seventeen. How many? First name? Name, uh, twin. Twelve? Twin. First name. Yeah. Do you have a nickname? <laughs> so five. Five? Okay. And is that your card? No. No. Okay. One, two, three, four, and five. And how many in yours? Twenty-two. First name. <laughs> five. Five, and that's not your card? Nope. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see if this worked. Now, there's no way I could have controlled anything. But I had five random cards selected, shown to the audience, and I dealt the number of letters in your name. I had to use your nickname, but we got there for the very first time. Let's see if you're as lucky as Amarillo Slim. What was the name of your card? Do you remember? Yes. It's the Four of Clubs. Four of Clubs? Oh. And your card? Seven of Spades. Seven of Spades? And your card? Eight of Spades. Eight of Spades. And your card? Red King. A Red King of Diamonds. And your card? Five of Hearts. Five of Hearts. Just like that. And I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, but, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, it's possible Penn and Teller already know how that trick was done. However, I promised Penn to surprise you. And remember I told you Amarillo Slim won his final world championship poker hand with something you don't see too often in Las Vegas. And if we look at the bottom card of each one of these packets, if we're lucky, we just might find Amarillo Slim's royal straight flush in spades. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. Good to see you. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Wow. What have you been doing since the last time we saw you? Well, it's been a lot. I've been very busy, and it, actually, as a result of being on Penn and Teller Floors, I have my own show now in Boston <gasps> every fantastic. Friday night. Yeah. 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 Do you think that, that you have even more writing on this this fool than than in previous? Maybe, times? maybe, because I spent about two and a half years on this trick. You practice a lot. I, I, I do practice a lot, and this yes. one required that. So. <laughs> Is there such a thing as practicing too much? Uh, I think uh, I think there is, yeah, because yeah. It, it, in terms of hands. Oh. It, you, you practice too much, hands cramp up a little bit because you're doing certain weird techniques and maneuvers and so right. on like that. How many times did you practice this morning? Uh, oh, let's see, to be honest, I think I did the trick about 15 times this morning. Uh -huh. No, 15, 20. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, <laughs> Penn, tell her. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. Okay. Uh, boy, when we see Paul Gertner, we worry. And this is an important one. It's the tiebreaker. That's true. You fooled us once. Mm -hmm. You didn't fool us the second time. No, now it's the third time. Yep. And this is, uh, Paul plays this game in a different plane than everybody else that comes out here. Because <laughs> uh, he did a trick that I am certain fooled just about everybody watching. And yet you sat there smug knowing we were seeing you do every one of those five moves. Okay. But you were okay with that, because you're a rat bastard. <laughs> That's why you're okay with that. And you were saying, well, you know, let him catch me at the other thing, at the end. Okay? <laughs> now, when you turned your back on us, to the audience, that seems like, oh, he's being so fair and so honest. Right? But you turn your back, we as magicians think he can do anything he wants with that deck. He's there by himself with his back to us with the, with the cards in his hand. And then you said that you were going to add on a little trick at the end. And we think you did add on, and we think you added on something besides just a trick. You added on something to accomplish the trick. You know what we're talking about? Did you do something tricky when your back was turned? I didn't do anything tricky when my back was turned, but... You didn't do it like that? It's a fooler!